book, a uh, slicing pie handbook um, by Mike Moyer. And I'm just gonna make sure that everything's good and we're going live. Let me just make sure that it's, oh, there we go. Okay, it wasn't showing up that we were live. So I just wanna make sure that it's working. All right, and let me just get this shared over here. And we'll be good to go. All right, there we go. Cool, all right, so today, um, we're back. I'm Amelie. That's Janine. She's over there. <laughs> over there, I guess. Um, and again, today we're going to be talking about the book Slicing Pie Handbook. And um, it's about a partnership um, and how to um, structure um, the, uh, the equity prior to the break even point. Um, and I think that um, Mike Moyer has a really great methodology. Um, that's a little different than anything that I, Janine and I have have heard of or before we both read this book. Um, so we're just going to kind of discuss it um, and then we think you should go out and buy it and read it, but um, we'll go over it. So if you have any questions about it, let us know if you're live. Go ahead and put the questions um, in the comments now. If you are watching the replay, do a hashtag replay and any questions you have or if you've read the book. Feel free to tell us your thoughts about that. We'd love to hear what you think about it. Um, so based on what um, he talks about, um, a typical partnership agreement is usually like a fixed split agreement based on um, their potential contribution. And it doesn't change um, throughout the, the, the um, length of that partnership. Um, and this is like based on time or money and it, it never changes. It's just a fixed thing. And then even, you know, through the, let's say the startup period to break even is six months. It never changes based on how much money someone's putting in or how much time someone's co um, contributing. Um, and so one of, one of the things that I, I really, I liked, and I pulled this quote out specifically because I thought it's kind of funny. It kind of gives you um, a picture in mind of a little bit how ludicrous it is to kind of base it off of that. And no, by no fault, like, you know, we all have done this, you know, in partnerships and based it off of like basically predicting the future of what it's going to be like. And so he says, this is kind of like paying someone their annual salary on the first day of work because they told their manager they were going to work hard. And that does sound kind of crazy, but it's true. And so, um, you know, and he says, you know, an entrepreneur's optimism um and belief that they can predict the future is is one of the things that makes entrepreneurs so great, but it can definitely be detrimental when it comes to partnerships. Um, and so basically his model is about um, a dynamic, um, a dynamic method on how to track what people are contributing each quarter versus it just being the same thing, regardless of how much they're putting in or how much time or, how much money they're putting in to, um, into the, into the startup. Um, so, um, the, the traditional way of doing it is that a share percentage would be, is found by dividing the value of the contribution by the total value or valuation of the amount. Um, the way that he does it, um, is to figure out the adjusted, fair market value of the contribution divided by the total adjusted fair market value. So when we say adjusted, so there's cash and non-cash contributions. And so he actually accounts for and has multipliers that you use to figure out um, what those adjusted amounts are. So a cash investment is more risk is more is riskier than a non-cash contribution. Um, and so he actually has all of this laid out. It's really fantastic. Um, on how he um, explains all of this and, and also the, the pie, um, the slices, which are the pieces that, that every, each person owns of the business to the break even point, right? Um, so Ginny, do you have any thoughts on, on, how, um, on how, like what you thought of when you first started reading the book? Oh, yeah. So I spent a few years in the tech world. He's coming from the tech world point of view. And that's where these equity conversations get really super heated in the beginning. And they have a kind of a specific path 
well, a more common pathway with their equity of their their founders, right? And then there are different levels of investments coming in to help grow the company. Um, and so a lot of times the founders who are having these heated conversations over how they're gonna split the equity, aren't, especially if they're new, aren't even aware of how it works at these higher levels. And so um, they're not even accounting for these other equity shares that, that need to happen if they're gonna follow that path. Right. Yeah. And so, exactly. and so, yeah. So even if they're able to have a non-heated discussion and get it all sorted out, it's still not the right way to get going. Right. And I love how he, so he explains that it's evaluated on a quarterly basis. And one of the things that Janine and I both, we were, we were discussing this when we decided to um, do this book to discuss the book today was that um, he takes you from the point of starting the partnership to someone leaving. And what's great is that he talks about, there's a difference on how someone leaves. So if it's in bad faith, what he calls bad faith, or you know, if the person decides um, that they wanna get a different job, and then it puts the business in kind of a shitty position to have to like cover for that person, that's what he's calling bad faith. Um, then it's on the it, the burdens on the employee to give up their slice, not give up, but they have to give up their slices of the pie that they own. Now, if it's based on the company, so if if the company for the example he gives in the book is if the company moves their home office to a to another state and one of their one of the people, the partners, or um, one of the employees then decides, well, they don't want to pick up and leave their life, you know, leave their home to to move to where the company was going, the burden's on the company then, and the person still keeps their slices. Um, so I think that's really an interesting way to do it. Um, and it just, and it, and it, what he call he calls it de-incentivizing people to either leave or to finish out the project, which I think is so important because, you know, there are some times when things can get tough. And so because they're at risk of losing their slices or the burdens on them, whether it's the, the business as a whole or the employee that leaves, um, it de-incentivizes them from leaving the partnership because then they either risk losing their slices or the company risks losing, you know, um, the, the person that, that leaves then maintains their slices, so. Yeah, the thing is it really just accounts for life because when you do that yeah. fixed share thing, it's like you're, it's based on a whole bunch of assumptions on everybody's super positive, happy, enthusiastic feelings, yeah. like you were saying about um, <laughs> entrepreneurs. And then there's the opposite side, right? Contracts are from when everything goes wrong. But partnerships are the, the business entity that fail the most, right? And they right. usually fail over disputes like this. So it doesn't account for, um, like you say, you know, there's, he, I love that he breaks it down into people leaving with cause versus without cause, because you're right. not taking account into, you know, deaths in the family, babies, right. Um, the fact that these startups are usually people, it's sweat equity that they're earning. So many of right. them have other jobs and other things can happen with that. Um, so there's downsides to it, but it also doesn't account for, um, or like the traditional model doesn't right. account for that person that may, may have originally started as a small role, but then they, they just shine and they take other things and they, and they just thrive within this but right. their, and their role becomes greater and they really take the thing to fruition. So, yeah. um, and it accounts for all the things because people's contributions are different. Like I was saying, there's cash, there's non-cash, but non-cash could be time. It could be connections, right? And so all of those have a value, right? There's a, there's a fair market value for them, but then there needs to be an adjustment. So that way you can build into, well, how many slices does someone get if they put a hundred dollars in versus, you know, they put in a hundred hours. Right. And, and he mm -hmm. does say that putting in money is riskier because, um, you're actually putting the money in versus putting your time in, which doesn't devalue the time. It just puts, it just puts some more weight on the fact that someone's putting in money. Um, but I think it's a very fair way in evaluating each quarter because there are good, like you said, life, right? Like, in a situation with like you and I, like there's some months just from our own partnership and we're in a little different place because we've already met break even. And so once like this model only goes until break even, once you've done that, then people are making money. So it's different, but you know, there are some months when, you know, I'm busier with life or doing things and, and then you take on more of the burden. And so there's points when, you know, you're going to have to do that. And so 
evaluating it. There's no way to predict what's going to happen in the in six months to a year of a startup. I mean, it could be a year till they, you know, till till a business breaks even. And there's a lot that can happen in a year, right? And so um, this accounts for that and just evaluating it. And on his website, he actually has um, he has the spreadsheet uh, template that you can input the numbers to to figure out what those those pie slices look like. And he has the equations um, for figuring out the uh, the adjusted numbers and all of that, which I think is really helpful. Um, and one of the best things I think is um, he has a list of lawyers that know this methodology. So if you're in business or you're getting ready to get into a partnership, he even talks about if you were in a fixed, um, a traditional fixed partnership and you want to move to this, you know, he even talks about how to do that. And he gives a list of lawyers. So if you're thinking about being in a partnership or you're in a partnership already, he on his website, he has a list of those um, lawyers that know this methodology and can help you get it set up. Um, and when we're done, I'll make sure I put the links in um, for his website um, mm -hmm. so so that people can go there. But I thought that that was really helpful. Um, and I was just looking through my notes to see if I missed yep. anything, but let go me ahead. Just, while you're looking at your notes, let me just speak to, you know, the thing about partnerships in general, it's like, as you were saying, the time shifts, it's like, it's so much about expectations and clear communications and it's a relationship. I mean, we joke that we're like an old married couple, right? But, <laughs> but, but that's important, right? You had the same things that cause any relationship to fail apply, except that I would argue that like time versus money is even more sensitive of an issue in a partnership. Right. Um, so it's like, you know, it's like you were speaking to us uh, shifting stuff based on life, but also, I mean, there are upsides to it. I love that we can plan ahead and vacation and cross cover. And that is also a guarantee for our clients that there's no single point of failure in the services that we provide. I mean, there's a lot of upsides to a partnership, but yeah. you really have to work at it. And the thing I like about slicing pie in how it applies to that is it, it keeps the, it's a very fair approach. If you have the conversation, especially when you're like, hey, let's read this book, let's work through it together, let's set up this framework, and because it's intended to be calculated dynamically, it and you can just add your, okay, whether you're doing it weekly, monthly, quarterly, add it into your planning sessions, exactly. and it's just a scheduled business conversation without the awkwardness goes away, I think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and he even talks about the the, what does he call it? The fix or fight? Like mm -hmm. you either fix what you have going on or you end up fighting about it. And like you said, it's a lot of the reason why partnerships don't work out. Um, you know, somebody, it's like the group projects. And when you're in school and someone always takes, and I'm not gonna lie, I felt like, you know, a lot of times, you you know, yet end up being taking on the burden of, of doing most of the project. And there's always somebody that does. And, um, and there's always someone who doesn't. We all right, exactly. And so this allows, <laughs> you know, this allows for the reward or to ha get incentivized for being the person that maybe takes on more, which then also allows it to balance out in the end. So like if there's one month where that person who's been doing most of the sweat equity is is not able to put that time in, it does account for that. So then whoever picks up the slack then will get those extra pieces of the pie that were you know re that were given up from the person that wasn't able to put as much yeah. time in so and i like that he digs in and addresses one of my it's like a, the downside of time-based stuff is the person who runs the clock right yeah <laughs> and the thing is depending on the nature of your partnership that's again where a lot of people go into partnerships not knowing each other well it's like we had a chance to get to know each other uh through coaching and then working together on our podcast before um, we before we went into a business arrangement that right. involved finances. <clears throat> but I've been back when I was doing, I've, I've hooked up with people on projects in mobile app development where we were just at a developer group at a Starbucks and was like, hey, you know, when everyone's throwing out the good ideas, we get this, this, and this. And then you just kind of congregate and everyone's excited about it. Um, only to find, and the project actually on the upside, it went to success and we won two awards from Samsung for it. But on the other hand, I was working with a guy who was a genius animator that I had no idea was functionally illiterate and would send me, you know, literally one time he sent me over 500 files all named Untitled One and I had to rename them all. And it's like, so that made 
days of work for right. me in, in how that worked together. And yet right. you know, it's like, had I known we could have accounted for time properly. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, but what I was going to say just oh. on that was that he digs into the part of making those standardized time for each milestone delivery right. um, in order to account for that. So people can't run the clock and it incentivizes them to get things done faster. Yeah. And people always do better with timelines, even if they are yes. arbitrary, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, anyway, we really enjoyed this book. We thought it was really helpful. Um, you know, if you're even considering a partnership, we both highly recommend reading this book. And whoever it is that you might be getting into a partnership with, make sure you send them this book as well. Because <laughs> it's yeah, good if, if you both else, are on the same page way, about it. Yeah, it's a great um, way to start the conversation. Yeah, definitely. And um, But we highly recommend it. Even if you're not in one, it's still an interesting read. Um, and so we will put the links um, in the comments on where you can find it. And again, if you're um, if you have any questions about it or, or any thoughts about the book, if you've read it and you love it or you hate it, whatever, you know, tell us what you think in the comments. Um, and um, oh, yeah. Nick's, hi, Nick. Oh, How's it going? hi, Nick. Nick's oh, he said he, he learned about this the hard way last year. Okay, what you're saying. Oh. Well, thank you, Nick. We're glad you joined us live. Um, and it does save from having headaches later and some all out like brawls between partnerships, you know, between people that, you know, maybe started out as friends and then once it went, sour then they were no longer friends so this could save some relationships <laughs> if you if you read this and implement it first but um even if you're in a partnership now and, and you need to restructure i would still consider um how reading the book i think it's really it helpful it speaks to that in the book and how to yeah. apply it retroactively so if you're yeah exactly totally so um we've enjoyed um sharing this with you um we love to read so i think we're you know we might bring another book um next week so we'll see which one we choose um but we both have libraries of business books that we've both read and haven't read and want to dive into um and talk about so um we um appreciate you being here if you catch the replay give us a hashtag replay um and let us know in the comments if you have a book that you really like and if we haven't read it we'll read it and we can have a discussion maybe mm -hmm. a little mini um book club um, but let us know. Um, go ahead, Especially Marisa. if you've actually applied the things and yeah. worked or not worked. We'd love to hear actual experiences. With yeah, you. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So again, we'll be back here next week at 11 a.m. Eastern for Masterfully Integrated. And we look forward to seeing you then. Bye.